May 31st, 2021. As I promised, I'm coming to you today to speak about the two witnesses. The two witnesses is a topic discussed often within the end times community. But even 20, 30 years ago, when I used to go to church as a young girl, I grew up in Pentecostal church. These things used to be discussed. There were many theories of who these witnesses will be. Is it Moses? Is it Elijah? Is it Enoch coming back? Different people had different theories, but nobody really knew. A few years ago when I started to search out these things for myself, I asked Father, who are the two witnesses? And to my surprise, he showed me within the scripture itself. One witness is shown in Revelation chapter 1 verse 5. And the other witness is shown in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 6. These are the two witnesses that are described in Revelation, chapter 11. They already came and witnessed about Father. They are Father's two witnesses. Nevertheless, there is more to it. When I kept searching for more information, I was led to a chapter in Isaiah where two spirits are described. One is the spirit of righteousness and one is the spirit of justice. Father showed me that these two spirits indwell his two witnesses. He also showed me that Father's witnesses came more than once. In other words, there are always his witnesses on the earth. It's not that Jesus and John came many times, although I'm not saying they didn't. But it's more that in each age, there are witnesses present on earth to our Father. And they are indwelled by these two spirits, the spirit of righteousness and the spirit of justice. These two work together and they have a testimony of our Father. Let's say in one of the previous ages they could be identified as Moses and Aaron. They are almost like a prototype of Father's two witnesses. They spoke with the governments of the earth. They spoke with the, with those who kept father's children, uh, who kept father's children captive. And they were able to bring plagues onto the earth, just like it is written in Revelation chapter 11. Father's witnesses were here in each and every age. Be it Daniel, be it David, 
be it Jesus and John, be it Elijah and Elisha. There are most likely more that I'm not even aware of. I'm just giving you examples of those who were the Father's witnesses here on earth. Now, as we could see from the time of Exodus, and as we can read from Revelation chapter 11, it is Father's witnesses who can bring plagues upon the earth, upon the whole earth. And so when a mysterious illness was announced to be upon the whole earth last year in March, it was a sign that the two witnesses are here and doing their job. This is something that the watchman could have announced. The two witnesses are here. They did not, and so I am going to announce it. The two witnesses are here. Now here's the problem, guys. At least two times when the two witnesses were doing their job, at least two times in the past, a whole new religion sprang based on their work. When Moses and Aaron were doing what they were supposed to be doing, Subsequently, their work was turned into a religion. To this day, we hear about Moses' law, law of Moses. Now, let me make one thing really clear. Moses did not want to start a religion. And it wasn't law of Moses. Moses was given a set of spiritual laws from our father and somebody took these spiritual laws and applied them to flesh and boom you got the religion Today we call it Judaism. This was not meant to be. Moses and Aaron were the witnesses of our father. And that's about it. Or take John and Jesus. They both had a testimony of our Father. They knew our Father in a way that others didn't. And they were giving the testimony to other people so that others may find Father easier. And what do we have today? Christianity. Where Jesus, one of the witnesses of our Father, is being glorified as God. This is a problem. Jesus came to give testimony and show the way to Father. He did not come so that a religion could be started in his name. 
And so, in this age, the two witnesses are working in a way that is hidden. In a way where nobody can worship them because that is wrong. In a way where their, ident where their identity is not known so that no new religion may start. We are not to worship a man. We are to worship God. And so if you're still waiting for the two witnesses to appear on the scene, it's already happened. The evidence is there. I've only been walking this earth for 37 years. But the last year has been the strangest of them all. And I bet that if you think back on your years, you will agree with that statement. Everything's strange. Everything's different. People know that something is happening. The two witnesses are here. But they're not here to start a religion. They just got a job to do. And so do you. Here's a problem. There are many out there who feel they are father's witnesses. There are many who've been told that they were father's witnesses. And you know what? It's true. Because father has many witnesses. Just because you were told you're his witness doesn't mean you're one of these two that are described in the book of Revelation. Here's the thing. There are some out there who believe they hold the office of the two witnesses. That they're waiting to be called forward. That they're waiting to be allowed to reveal themselves to the world. That they're waiting for a spirit to indwell them. A lot of waiting, okay? Now listen to me carefully. The two witnesses are father's witnesses. One of them was Jesus. One of them was John in the previous age. And there were others too before them. But if your testimony is about Jesus, then you're just witness to another witness. Your testimony has to be about Father to be Father's witness. But if your testimony is about Jesus, then... How can you be one of the two witnesses? Jesus' testimony was about Father. The gospel that Jesus sent the twelve to preach was about the heavenly kingdom. Jesus' gospel wasn't about Jesus. Jesus' gospel wasn't about his death and resurrection. If your testimony is about Jesus' death and resurrection, then 
you're just witnessing to Jesus. You're witnessing to one of the witnesses. In that case, you can't be Father's witness, never mind the two witnesses. The two witnesses have been operating for quite a while, and the evidence is all around us. If you have nothing to do with Corona, if you don't know why people are ordered to wear masks, and I don't mean the official explanation, then I suggest you're not one of the two witnesses. The world will never know who they are, and that's okay. They're not here to be worshipped or start a new religion. They might reveal their identity at the time when father's children learn not to worship a man, but father only. And that might take a pretty long time. But that's okay. They're here anyway. And no, I'm not one of them. I'm just passing on a message. P.S. There are some of you out there who were approached by our father and you were specifically told you are my witness and then at some later time you realized that you were not one of the two witnesses and you didn't know what to do with this some were heartbroken because they thought they heard wrong Let me help you. Jesus, one of the two witnesses from the previous age, is praying in the garden, as it's recorded in Gospel of John, chapter 17. When you read that chapter, you realize that he speaks of Father's name. Jesus knew our Father's name. When you go to Revelation chapter 14, the 144 are described as having their Father's name written on their foreheads. In other words, they knew their father's name. This establishes that the 144 are father's witnesses. But there are only two of them who father calls his two witnesses. But there's 144 altogether. And so if you were told you're a witness, it doesn't mean that Father meant one of the two. If you are his, his witness, you hold a testimony that is a unique one. Father entrusted you with something unique about himself, about his kingdom. It can be anything. Mm. 
Maybe it's time you share it with the others.